Hey everybody, I'm Hugh Brownstone for Three Blind Men and an Elephant, and today I want to talk very briefly about what I've decided to call the Beast from the East, Sigma's 60 to 600 millimeter f4.5 to 6.3 sports lens. That's because there's not much to say other than that it is an exceptional hunk of glass, and at $2,000, not cheap in and of itself, twice as expensive as Sigma's own 150 to 600 contemporary, and $200 more than their 150 to 600 sports lens, still an incredible value. Think other full-frame lenses that come close but don't meet that kind of reach and range. Think Sony's $3,000, 100, 400, 45 to 5.6 G Master with a 1.4x teleconverter, or Canon's Uber $11,500 telephoto, the 600 F4L IS2. But there's a rub. Before I go any further, though, a quick reminder to be sure to enter our lighting gear giveaway courtesy of our friends at BH. See how to enter in the show notes down below. Click more. And if it turns out you love what we do, find out the myriad ways you can support our efforts once again by checking out the show notes down below. And if you have questions, as so many of you do, about the gear we use, well, we always put that down in the show notes as well. So, okay. First, the lens itself. Stout build quality. Thoughtful touches from the foot doubling as an Arca Swiss plate to click detents every 90 degrees. Strap lugs built into the lens collar, a switch to lock the zoom at minimum or maximum reach. The kind of outstanding image quality we've come to expect from Sigma Optics. From the little 30mm f1.4 we use daily on our GH5, we're using it right now, to the f1.8 twins, the 18-35 to and 5100 zooms, we used during our documentary series, Mariner East. I mean, critically sharp, smooth, minimal chromatic aberration, most of which can be corrected in post with one click, although Lightroom does not yet have a profile for the lens at the time I made this video. With this said, the 60 to 600 seems optimized, naturally enough, for the long end. At 600 millimeters, I was gobsmacked by what I could get handheld with this image stabilized lens, but at 60 or 70 millimeters, it was merely fine. I also saw mild vignetting at the long end, but nothing I minded, nothing I'd even choose to correct. It autofocused effortlessly with Canon's Goldilocks adapter on the Canon R during the day. And since the Sigma doesn't have an aperture ring, it was lovely to use the ring on the adapter for that purpose. But the Sigma hunted actually quite a bit in the evening when I shot a few frames of the moon. Again, handheld. But the rub I mentioned a few moments ago is the Sigma's size and weight relative not to other full frame lenses, but to crop sensor lenses. Because while well, you can definitely see the difference when pixel peeping, at normal sizes and viewing distances, the admittedly shorter reach and 4X only Panasonic like a DG Vario Elmer at 50-200 we had on one hand, mated to the 20 megapixel micro four thirds in-body image stabilized G9 on the other, even then gave up less than you might imagine to the Sigma mounted on the 30 megapixel full frame non-IBIS Canon R. And Claudia carried around that G9 combo for hours without problem. I, on the other hand, couldn't hold the Sigma Canon R combination up to my eye for more than a minute before having to regroup. We're talking a very front-heavy six pounds for the Sigma alone, but just under a pound and a half for the shorter Leica. Where at the long end, it also enjoys a stop and a half advantage and $300 less compared to the 60-600. to 600. This is not an inconsequential consideration, especially when you travel. But I had a very specific objective on Sunday, capturing New York J. Maisel style, handheld. The bottom line is that I got exactly the images I'd imagined in my head days earlier, and two or three large scale, 27 by 40 inch, no excuses prints will go up on our walls shortly as a result.
still. The Sigma is best suited for a different use case. On the sidelines of a football, soccer, or rugby match, perhaps at a racetrack, but unlike the Vario Elmerit, always on a monopod, ideally with a gimbal head, something like a Benro A48 FD with Oben GH30, or if you really want to go nuts, a really right stuff FG2. Although, at $1,400 and change, that approaches the price of the lens itself. In any case, this is where that 10x zoom range shines as you don't know on which side of the pitch the action will take place or how far from you that Formula One car will be when, well, rear window anyone? What a great movie. What a great lens, especially for urban landscapes, sports lens moniker notwithstanding. It's so good. I'm in that kind of mood these days. It's almost enough to make me want to go out and get a 40 or 50 megapixel camera for it. Almost. If you like what you've seen here today, please give a thumbs up, subscribe, join the conversation in the comments section below. You guys are just so sharp and so generous wow. Share, create a playlist, consider supporting our work by using our no cost to you affiliate links down below or making a contribution directly via the PayPal link down below. As always, we thank you for, for three blind men and an elephant. I'm your brownstone. See you next time.